Okay, we are going to try to get this lesson done in about 15 minutes. So if you guys can just hang in there with me and copy everything down as I go. You should know how to write uh, equations using parallelism, lines that are parallel to each other. And we're going to review dilating a line and writing its equation too. So without further ado, make sure that you have your pen or pencil handy. If you've got a ruler, that might be great too. But if you don't, that's okay. You can wing it with your hand. And we're going to get started. So the first thing says graph the lines y equals 2x and y equals 2x minus 5. So y equals 2x. One of the things I want you guys to remember is that y equals 2x is the same as y equals 2x plus 0. So you can't really see the y-intercept in the equation. And if you can't, that means that your y-intercept is 0. So y equals 2x means start at the origin and then go up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1, and up 2 over 1 again. And so if I draw y equals 2x with my not-so-steady hand here, it looks something like that. So there's y equals 2x. And if I graph y equals 2x minus 5, that means I'm going to start a little bit lower, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and draw that line there. So everybody get those two copied down, y equals 2x and y equals 2x minus 5. And if I were there with you, we'd have this discussion, but I'm not. So the next question was, what do you notice about the lines? And what you should notice about the lines is they don't touch each other. And if they don't touch each other, that means that they are parallel. You got it. They are parallel. And how would I describe them? I'd, I'd say that they're parallel, and there's one above the other, but they're parallel, they don't touch. Now, what about their equations could have told me that they were parallel before I even graphed them? So think back to when we were proving parallelograms and proving that things are rectangles or squares. What do I know about things that are parallel? I know that their slopes are equal. So lines that have equal slopes means that those lines are parallel. Okay? Equal slopes, parallel. Equal slopes, parallel. So now I'm going to come down here, use a different color. It says graph the line x over 2 plus 4. So don't forget if you see x over 2 or x over anything, you can pull it out in front so it looks more like a slope and make that y equals 1 half x plus 4. So if I want to graph that, I have a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of a half, 1, 2, 3, 4. And a slope of 1 half means up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2. So 1 half x plus 4. And then this says graph a line that's parallel to this one but passes through 4, 1. Well, if I need a line that's parallel to this one, I need one that has the same slope as the one that we're using, which is a half. And it has to pass through 4, 1. So I'm going to start at 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. And then I want something that's parallel to it. Okay, so I'm going to use the slope of up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And then it says, I'm also going to need to write the equation of the second line. So I'm going to go left as well to see if I can find that y-intercept. So up 1, right 2 is the same as down 1, left 2. Down 1, left 2. And now I can even see my y-intercept. And now I need the equation of that line. Okay, well, if I need the equation of that line, I need y equals mx plus b where m is the slope, and we said, well, our slope was a half, and then b is our y-intercept, which I can see right on the graph, is negative 1. So y equals 1 half x plus negative 1, or even better, y equals 1 half x minus 1 would be the equation of that line. Ta-da! 
All right, so you got those copied down. There's some parallel lines there. And the rule that we used for this first page is parallel lines have equal slopes. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Burn that into your brain. It becomes important for a lot of other mathematical ideas. So parallel lines have equal slopes. Got it written down? Here it is again. Look, it's bigger. Write it down. You need that. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Okay. So let's move on to the back. So flip your paper. And I'm going to change colors again just for fun. Draw a line that's parallel to the x-axis and has a y-intercept of 7. Okay, so y-intercept of 7. I'm going to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if I want to be parallel to the x-axis, that's this one, I need to draw straight across. Ta-da! So parallel to the x-axis, y-intercept of 7. What's the equation of this line? Well, horizontal lines have y equals equations. So that's going to be the line y equals 7. And what is its slope? So what's the slope of a horizontal line? We haven't talked about this in a while. So the slope of a horizontal line, you've got to do rise over run, except this thing doesn't rise at all. So when you do rise over run, it's 0 divided by whatever, and 0 divided by something is always 0. So the slope of a horizontal line is going to be 0. Okay? Then the next thing says draw a line that's parallel to the y-axis. Remember your y-axis is that guy up top. Draw a line that's parallel to the y-axis and passes through negative 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And if I want to be parallel to the y-axis and pass through that point, that means i got to go up down. And that passes through x equals negative 3. So that's the line, x equals negative 3. What is its slope? Well, when I go to find this slope, slope is rise over run. So this rises a lot, but it doesn't run at all. So when I do rise over run, I get, you know, some kind of a number, but my run is zero. And what do you get when you divide by zero? Um, you get nothing. It's undefined. Okay. So those are two things that you also need to commit to memory. And that's what we're going to put down here in the rules. So in our rules, I want you to say vertical lines, such as like x equals 4, x equals 7, stuff like that. Vertical lines have undefined slope. And horizontal lines... such as like y equals 7, have a slope of 0. Okay, if you have a vertical line, it has undefined slope. If I have a horizontal line, it has a slope of 0. Write those down, and then I've got a cute little way to remember that. When you have a vertical line, one that goes like this, you can make an n for undefined, look at that, undefined, see it, see that, see the end? If I was there, I'd make a silly face right now, but you can see it, there's an end. And then if you have a horizontal line like this, you know what letter I can make with that? You know what letter I can make? Because the slope is zero, I can make a Z. Do, 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 look at that. So vertical lines have undefined sloped, horizontal lines have slopes of zero. Ta-da! Okie dokie. Everybody got that copied down? All right, I'll leave it up there for a second. All right, and then we're going to get to number four. Draw a line that passes through 0, 5, and 5, 0. Okay, so 0, 5, and 5, 0. I'll plot those two. You do it also. We're going to go to fuchsia. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. One, two, three, four, five. 
there's five zero and zero five right there, and it says draw a line that passes through them. I can do that. Whoop. What is the equation of this line? What is its slope? Okay, well, if I want the equation of that line, I need y equals mx plus b. To figure that out, I need the slope. So I go down one, right one, down one, right one. So our slope is negative one. So y equals negative one x plus my y-intercept, which is five. And my slope is negative one. Then it says dilate these points with a scale factor of two centered at the origin. Well, it's been a while since we've done dilations, so I need you to remember that dilating means we're going to multiply. So if I want to multiply by a scale factor of two, zero five and five zero becomes zero ten, six seven eight nine ten, and ten zero six seven eight nine ten. And then I'm going to connect these guys. And then it says, what's the equation of this new line? So this new line is going to be y equals, all right, what's my slope? Down one, right one, down one, right one. Or if you want to think about it, it's down 10, right 10. So my new slope for rise over run is down 10, right 10, which is still negative 1. So y equals negative 1x plus 10. That's my new y-intercept. Everybody got that? And then if you look at these two equations, you should see that they look really similar. Their slopes stayed the same, but their y-intercepts are what changed. And that was a rule we used to have about dilations. So the rule is when you dilate a line, multiply, uh, dilating a line multiplies the y-intercept, but slope stays the same. So when you dilate a line, you just multiply the y-intercept by whatever your scale factor was, but your slope is going to stay the same. Okie dokie. Cool, cool. All right, I think we're doing okay. All right, turn the page one more time. I don't know how many minutes I'm at, but I'm getting there. Turn the page one more time, and then we'll do these together pretty quickly. And we're just going to do some practice, and then your homework is based off of all of this. So I'm going to go to black. So it says write the equation of a line that's parallel to this line and passes through the origin. So what you need to do now is basically use all those rules that we've been putting in the boxes to kind of remember stuff. So write the equation of a line that's parallel to another line. So let's see, was there a box about parallelism? Oh yeah, there was. Parallel lines have equal slopes. So if I want to write something that's parallel to 2x plus 3y was 8, I need to know what my original slope is and keep it. But I can't tell what my original slope is because that's not in y equals 4. So I'm going to take 2x plus 3y equals 8 and get it in y equals 4. So I'm going to subtract 2x. And I got 3y equals 8 minus 2x. Divide everybody by 3. So I get y equals 8 thirds minus 2 thirds x. Then I have to be able to look at that equation and say, all right, my slope is the number in front of x, so my slope is negative two-thirds. So now I want to write an equation of a new line that is parallel to the old line. So my new line also has to have a slope of negative two-thirds. So my new line is going to be y equals negative two-thirds x plus b but I just need to know what my y-intercept is. So, so far I've got right an equation of a line that's parallel to the old line. That's the y equals negative two-thirds x. But now I need to also pass through the origin, so I need to know my y-intercept. But wait, if I pass through the origin, that means my y-intercept is zero, so my plus b would just be zero, so I would have y equals negative two-thirds x plus zero, or just, you know, leave it alone that way. Ta-da! Okay, jump to number two. Write the equation of the line that's parallel to that line and contains the point zero seven. 
Okay, well, if I've got to be parallel to this line, it's got to have the same slope. So I would have y equals 1 half x plus b. And if it has to contain the point 0, 7, well, wait a second, 0, 7 is on the y-axis. That is the y-intercept. So I can just say, oh, cool, that's a 7. So y equals 1 half x plus 7. And remember, if I didn't give you that y-intercept, you could have always done that other way that I showed you yesterday, y equals 1 half x plus b, and then plug in 0 for x and 7 for b. And that helps you solve for b. But in this case, they gave me the y-intercept, so I just didn't need to do that. All right, write the equation of a line through 2, 3, and parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so if I need to be parallel to the x-axis, that's that one. And if I have to pass through 2, 3, I can just think about it and say, okay, if I have to pass through 2, 3 and be parallel to the x-axis, that means I need a horizontal line. And that horizontal line that passes through 2, 3 would have an equation like y equals a number. And what numbers does y equal? It equals 3. Done. What's the equation of y equals 3x plus 2 after it's dilated from the origin with a scale factor of 4? Okay, we had a box about dilations. Where was it? Where was it? Dilating a line multiplies the y-intercept, but slope stays the same. Okay, so I want to dilate the y-intercept, but slope stays the same. So what's the equation of 3x plus 2 after a scale factor of 4? So the slope stays the same, so I'm going to keep y equals 3x, but then I'm going to multiply my y-intercept by 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, a line has the equation y equals mx plus b. After a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of negative 3, the image of the line is 6x minus 9. Find the equation of the original line. Okay, well if I've dilated, my original line and my new line should have the same slope. So I'm just going to start with y equals 6x, because I know that has to stay the same. If we've dilated by a scale factor of negative 3, that means our y-intercept has been multiplied by negative 3. So after multiplying by negative 3, we got negative 9. What number can you multiply by negative 3 and get negative 9? Positive 3. Ta-da! So really what I did is I took negative 9 and divided by negative 3. Cool, cool? And then very last one, and then I will shut up and you guys can work on your problem set. Uh, line A contains the point P minus 4, comma 2 and negative 2, 9. Line B contains the point P uh, negative 1 and negative 1, 1. Find the value of P if the lines are parallel. Whoa! Okay, I'm going to calm down a little bit and say, all right, if the lines are parallel, the thing you know the most about parallel lines is that they have the same slope. So that means the slope between here and here is the same as the slope between there and there. And slope has a formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I do that for the first minus 2 over negative 2 minus p minus 4, and then on the second pair of points, I have 1 minus negative 1 over negative 1 minus p. So 9 minus 2 is 7. And down here I have to distribute this negative. So that's going to be a plus, a minus on the p, and a plus on the 4. So I have negative 2 plus negative p plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2 minus p. And then over here, my two minuses become two pluses. And I still have negative one minus p. And then I have a nice proportion. And I'm going to cross multiply here to solve the proportion. So seven times negative one minus p and two times two minus p. And I'm going to distribute in both cases here, negative 7 minus 7p. 
and 4 minus 2p. And now I need to solve for p, so I'm going to add 7p to both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And so when I do that, negative 7 minus 4 is negative 11. Negative 2p plus 7p is 5p. And if I divide by 5, I get p equals negative 11 fifths. And I'm just going to leave it like that, actually. I don't have a problem with that fraction. And there's your answer. So not all answers are going to work out to be whole numbers, and that's completely okay. It's just how life works sometimes. But the important part about this is knowing that we had parallelism, so we had to set the slopes equal. All right, so I am done. You guys are going to just do the problem set for homework, and have a great day. See you tomorrow.